Hello everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the Legends of Tomorrow Season 6 Review Series and today I am going to be talking about Episode 10, Bad Blood, which I have just finished watching and this episode wasn't actually too bad. The main focus of this was primarily on John Constantine and Spooner as they went on a quest to try and get John Constantine's powers back as he lost it at the beginning of this season. And it was quite enjoyable. I thought this was pretty decent. There was a couple of little silly moments, but by and large, I thought this one was pretty good. And this episode mainly focused on the Crowley painting, which John Constantine has been keeping in his house. And I enjoyed this episode quite a lot. I wouldn't say it was one of the greatest, but it certainly wasn't one of the worst. I would say this was pretty decent. I would say this was definitely one of the better ones. So with that all said, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about episode 10, Bad Blood. So this episode opens up with John Constantine opening a pack of cigarettes and pulling nicotine gum out of it. And the Crowley painting is constantly ranting at him. And John leaves a chunk of gum on Crowley's forehead. He tells him to give up the location of the map to the Fountain of Imperium, or he will desecrate the painting with his bodily fluids. Yeah. Crowley tells Constantine to find the banker he shared it with, a woman who turns out to be a vampire. John Constantine tricks her into giving him the map, but she threatens to come back later and take revenge. Then leaves a potion behind that she implies Constantine will be begging for more of later. Meanwhile, on the wave rider, Birad, Nate and Gary in his alien form sing a lullaby to the baby alien from the last episode. Shortly after, it falls asleep, though it wakes up shrieking. Spooner says she has no patience for translating for the baby alien. After Constantine figures out that the fountain is likely in Spain, Spooner is called on to read Kayla's egg sack on the back of Rory's neck. Now, if you remember, at the end of the last episode, Rory announced that he was pregnant with alien eggs after sleeping with one of the aliens. Horrible stuff. Just before she starts telling them anything, John calls her away to have a drink and tells her that he is looking for the fountain and asks her to translate the map. She says that, according to the map, only those who are worthy can drink from the fountain and the pair head off to Spain in 1939. Constantine warns Spooner that there has been a recent civil and class war and deduces that they are looking for a man known as El Gato, who had survived so many assassination attempts that he assumes El Gato must have drank from the fountain. They head to a local bar and the owners pull a gun on them, believing them to be fascist spies. John talks them out of it and they all start drinking. On the ship, Rory is still in denial about being pregnant with aliens. As they're arguing at the table, Nate and Zari come in to reveal that the alien is aging rapidly and becoming hormonal and huge. Back at the bar, the tavern owner tells John that El Gato gains power by drinking from the udders of a magical donkey in the next town. However, John and Spooner notice that a patron in the bar is acting very cagey and find their way to the wine bar cellar to what they assume will be the fountain. They find a young man reading a comic book about a Zora-like woman who he identifies with Spooner. She can read his thoughts, implying that he has drank from the fountain, and upstairs a captain enters the bar asking for El Gratos on Hitler's behalf. Norazizia says that his specialty is fairy tales, that he has studied the Spear of Destiny and the Loom of Fate, and now this. He instructs his men to line up the people in the bar and shoot them one by one until he talks. The owner says that he's El Gato and surrenders, and Norazizia shoots him. The boy comes running from downstairs and holds the man's hand, healing him, but Spooner is captured as a result. Constantine is watching all of this from behind a wall, and the fascists are set to search the tavern and arrest everyone. Constantine runs out and nearly succumbs to the temptation to use the vial that the vampire gave him, but he decides to head back. On the wave rider, Rory and his daughter are hearing the sound of a battle as Gus Gus has continued to grow at a rapid rate. Lita wants him to go to the med bay and he tells her no, that he deserves to die if the eggs in his skull burst, because he deserted Kayla to get back to Lita. At that moment, she goes into labour. In the tavern, Spooner physically tells the boy not to worry and that her friend is going to get superheroes. He knows of the JSA and the girl from his comic, but Spooner tells him that these are less famous ones. <laughs> 
Norigia comes and threatens to slash the boy's throat, but John appears dressed as a priest and claims that he has orders from the Vatican. He tells Norigia that he is after the Fountain of Imperium and offers to interrogate the boy. On board the ship, the Tarazis use their totems along with Mick's blowtorch to get Gus Cuz out of the ship so that Mick can get his daughter to the medbay. When she arrives, she admits she fakes labour to get him to the medbay. At the bar, Constantine is faking a ceremony that forges a telepathic connection between the boy and Spooner. She tells him it's okay and the boy says that one day last year during a bombing raid he ran to a cave where he prayed for a way to save his uncle and an angel appeared and told him to drink from the fountain which is how he got his powers in the first place. He tells her that he can lead her to the cave but Spooner translates it as I don't know. Constantine distracts Norgia long enough for the tavern's owner's wife to get her rifle out and she and her husband manage to shoot down the fascists leaving most dead and Norgia with a badly damaged leg. In the woods, Constantine wants Spooner and the kid to help him, but she wants to go back and try to rescue his family. He tells her that without his magic, he can't help the powerless fight against the powerful, so she agrees to help him. In a cave outside town, the boy leads John to the fountain, but it's dry with mushrooms growing in it. He tells Spooner to use her connection to the kid to funnel his magic into John, offering Fernando a normal life and giving John his magic. Hey, there you go. He walks out of the cave to find that the four remaining have followed him to the cave and Fernando wants to make a deal. John can have his powers back if Fernando helps him find his mother. John lies that they aren't on their way in order to get Spooner to try and rush the process but ultimately has to stop and give her a pep talk to make it work. Reciting a lullaby in order to focus, Spooner manages to take Fernando's powers but they leave and return to the fountain rather than going into John who is apparently not worthy. John sends Spooner and Fernando to hide and takes the potion from his pocket, giving him powers, but also something like an acid trip. He stops the fascist giggling the whole way and kills Nogia before Spooner comes to find him. Seeing that he has left all of the soldiers dead, she is visibly shaken and then John passes out. On the wave rider, Gideon tells Lisa that Mick has 48 eggs in his skull. Ugh. She tells Mick that she needs him to survive just like the alien babies do. Mick finally comes to grips with being pregnant. Poor Mick. In 1939, John and Spooner lead Fernando back to the bar where he can talk again but has lost his powers. His uncle thanks John. John and Spooner come back to the haunted house. John is drunk and miserable and Spooner tries to console him with some homespun wisdom involving her Catholic faith. She admits that she lost faith when she was abducted but should have tried harder to save her mum. After she hears Crowley snoring in the painting, she goes to harass him and John is sniffing the potion bottle. She tells him not to do it or she'll tell Zari. He tells her that she won't and casts a spell on her to brainwash her into telling the legends that they succeeded in their mission and drank from the fountain. Just then the vampire walks in, giving him a case of vial, the potion, in exchange for the painting. And that's how we end episode 10 and that wraps up my review. Overall, I thought this episode was pretty decent. As I said, this episode mainly focused on John and Spooner trying to um, help get Constantine's powers back. And I quite enjoyed this. This was one of the better episodes of Legends of Tomorrow. And I'm very interested to see what's going to happen now that uh, John has um, brainwashed Spooner. And I'm curious to know whether or not he's going to take the potion. But time will tell, really. So that's going to be it from me. I'm going to wrap this up now. What did you think of episode 10? Did you enjoy it? What was your thoughts on Constantine exchanging the painting to the vampire? Do you think this will come back to bite him in the backside? And also, what about the vials of potions in exchange for the painting? Do you think something bad will come of this? And also, do you think Spooner will come out of Constantine's spell and actually tell the legends the truth about what really happened on their mission. You know what to do guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your thoughts and comments down below and I will see all of you next time for another edition of the Legends of Tomorrow Season 6 review series where I am going to be talking about Episode 11 which should be an interesting one, especially with the way Episode 10 ended. So until next time, take care everybody and stay safe and once again thanks for listening.